From Interior Alaska's most trusted news source, this is the Fairbanks Evening News. Good evening, Fairbanks. Thanks for joining us. Our top story tonight, a Fairbanks man has been arrested and charged with first-degree murder after a fatal shooting at an apartment complex. 37-year-old Chad Zerlo was arrested after Alaska State Troopers received a 911 call reporting a man had been shot at the apartment complex off the Old Steese Highway north of Fairbanks. The victim, identified in a release as 51-year-old Stephen Corcoran of Fairbanks, was reportedly shot during an argument. Troopers say the victim and Zerlo were acquaintances. An investigation is ongoing. And in other news this evening, a grand jury has indicted the Tanana man accused of fatally shooting two Alaska State Troopers last week. 20-year-old Nathaniel Satch Kangas was formally charged with two counts of first-degree murder, two counts of second-degree murder, third-degree assault, and tampering with evidence. The grand jury also indicted his father, 58-year-old Arvin Kangas, on charges of tampering with physical evidence as well as hindering prosecution in the first degree. The case has been passed to the Office of Special Services to be tried by Assistant Attorney General Greg Olson, who says as of now the trial will be held in Ninana. If convicted, Nathaniel Kangas faces a total time of imprisonment between 198 and 202 years. Arvin faces a sentence of up to five years in prison and a $50,000 fine if convicted. Both are scheduled to be arraigned May 13th. Law enforcement officials from both here and around the nation are planning to attend the memorial service tomorrow that is being held for two Alaska State Troopers killed in the line of duty. Sergeant Scott Johnson and Trooper Gabe Rich were fatally shot in Tannen last week. Organizers warn attendees that a high number of people are expected to attend and to arrive early with plenty of time to find parking and seating. The memorial is open to the public and doors will open at 3 p.m. and according to a press release will be closed promptly at 4 p.m. allowing no further entry. There will be no procession following the services. Now KTVF will be broadcasting the memorial live here on Channel 11 at 4. After recent developments in the case of the Fairbanks Four, another murder victim's mother is speaking out. Today the News Center spoke to the mother to 2002 murder victim Mahogany Davis. Davis, mother to William Holmes's son and ex-girlfriend, was fatally stabbed inside her apartment, her case still unsolved. This week, documents filed claimed a murder confession by William Holmes was made as early as 2011 in the Fairbanks 4 case. The jailhouse confession to a Department of Corrections officer in California was given to Fairbanks Police Department, who, documents claim, failed to act on. Holmes, a Lathrop High School graduate, is serving a prison sentence for the murder of two other men. Rhonda Davis says she believes Holmes is involved in her daughter's murder. Witnesses, if they would have paid attention to what the witnesses were saying, if they would have paid attention to what those boys were saying, they would have at least found the right person. And my daughter would still be here. And that other girl that died. You know, a lot of other people that knew him back then, basically he's done more than that. If he was taken off the street, my daughter would be here raising her son, seeing her kids go through school. So, yeah, I think, I think to me, his confession is true. The Fairbanks North Star Borough Assembly has adopted a new budget for the next fiscal year. Monty Bowen has that story. The Assembly approved a budget that will have about half the mill rate increase that the mayor proposed. That means less of a property tax increase than was originally expected. Uh, just a little over half of the increase that I had proposed, so um, therefore it's less. And uh, I think that's what the Assembly talked about as what they wanted to do. And uh, realizing that they also have to keep some money in the savings account. Hopkins called school funding an interesting compromise. So not all positions were funded with that action. The school district has to find some money. I have to find some money in my budget. And then the Assembly um, also took some out of the savings account that the borough has. The mayor said overall, the borough's expecting a positive year. The programs, the buses, the transit, the library, the new borough library, there, there are many good things that, are, that will be happening this year. Uh, and so, um, you know, we'll, we'll, we're not seeing a, uh, any major reductions in our service, which is important. We will have a, a brand new E911 system coming online shortly, and there's uh, a new emergency operations center um, that uh, we certainly have to keep up to date. So all of these things are good things for our community. This is Monty Bowen reporting. 
All right, when we come back, an agreement has been made between GVEA and PetroStar Incorporated. Also, Fairbanks Memorial Hospital is working to speed up medical tests for patients. Those stories are next. Welcome back to the Fairbanks Evening News. Golden Valley Electric Association and PetroStar Incorporated have reached agreements on a deal in which PetroStar will supply naphtha blended fuel to be burned at GVEA's North Power plants. The two companies expect to finalize the contract sometime after the GVEA Board of Directors meeting on May 12th. Golden Valley has been trying to find a new supplier since Flint Hills announced it would cease refining crude by the end of May. An interim contract with PetroStar will allow GVEA to continue to evaluate long-term fuel solutions for its power plants. There were concerns that diesel would have to be used to run the North Pole, power plant, the North Pole plants, which would have caused substantial increases in GVEA customer bills. When Flint Hills announced their shutdown, um, they advised us that they would not bring into uh, town the naphtha product that we normally used. Um, so we would have to use alternate fuels if uh, we bought from Flint Hills. So going to PetroStar, who refines products there, was able to make a product for us fairly close to the naphtha that we used from Flint Hills. So it makes for a good substitute. It's going to be a minimal impact on your pocketbook. Um, the cost of between the two products is virtually the same. The University of Alaska Fairbanks says that the class of 2014 is at a record size compared to other years. UAF is honoring the work of over 1,400 students receiving their degrees this Sunday. University spokeswoman Marmion Grimes says that the size of the graduating class is approximately 10 percent larger than other classes in UAF's history. Alaska Federation of Natives President Julie Kitko will give the keynote address at the commencement, where she will also receive an honorary doctorate degree. Grimes says that the Carlson Center will be open for public seating at noon. Yes, it's open to the public, anyone who wants to come in. It's a large venue, so we have lots of space for people to come in and celebrate with our students. You'll find that many, many of them have really interesting stories. They've all come um, to the university and gone through the university from lots of different places, lots of different backgrounds. Some of them are non-traditional students coming back to school. We often have, you know, parents and their children graduating together. So we, just like our campus, our commencement ceremonies are very diverse. State health officials say there has been a spike in the number of Alaskans contracting sexually transmitted diseases this year. Officials have seen an increase of about 20 new cases each of HIV and syphilis in the first four months of 2014. This compares to 24 new cases of HIV and 30 cases of syphilis in all of 2013. The majority of those infected are men in Anchorage, but local health officials are also seeing increased numbers here in Fairbanks. They say it's wise to be tested and get protection before engaging in risky behavior. For the folks that engage in those kind of behaviors, come in, let us screen and test you. The unfortunate thing is so many of these sexually transmitted infections have no symptoms. So someone may very easily think they're fine when indeed they have an infection and don't even know it. To be screened or pick up free protection, call the Fairbanks Regional Public Health Center at 452 1776. They are located on the corner of Barnett Street and Airport Road across from Two Dice Pawn Shop. The Fairbanks Memorial Hospital is working with a laboratory facility based in the lower 48 to speed up advanced medical tests for patients. Physicians working at FMH and Tanana Valley Clinic are now able to ask medical questions and submit specimens for testing purposes to scientists at Mayo Medical Laboratories located in Rochester, Minnesota. Now, usually physicians at the hospital need to wait approximately two days to receive the results of a medical test depending on the complexity. Since collaborating with Mayo Laboratories since April, FMH Lab Director Jennifer Schuler says that the wait to receive important results from a test has been cut by about a day. Allow our patients and our physicians access to um, advanced care that is the same that is available to the patients of the Mayo Clinic. Um, if our physicians have questions with laboratory results or need some help with diagnosis and whatnot, Mayo Clinic is available to be called and they can actually talk to the professionals there to get the answers that they need. All right, Daryl, Joe Cook is next with sports and an announcement from the UAF volleyball team. Three new players sign on to become Mannix. Also high school sports, a look at the weekend ahead and the play of the week. Play of the week. Awesome, sports is next.
Welcome back. It's TJF Interior Sports fans. So let's kick off the weekend right with sports. It seems like there's a trend in this year's college signing period. A lot of teams are announcing signings of three players. Yesterday, Monroe sent three seniors out. Now the UAF volleyball team will welcome three new players. This morning, the team announced that Dylan Branch, Emily Hartley, and Brooke Matice inked NLIs to become Nanooks. Branch is a setter from Murrieta, California, who played on a couple of volleyball club teams and was second team all Southwestern League for her high school. She will be a bio major. Hartley is an in-state recruit. Hartley is a 6'1 right side hitter from Talkeetna. She led the Susitna Valley Rams last year's 2A state title going 35-1. She's a two-time Borealis Conference MVP and she will be a psych major. Matice is from Fernley, Nevada and is an all-state and first-team all-league hitter as well. She was a part of a club team that made a national tournament last year. She plans to major in general studies. The trio joins Riley Rodowitz, Miranda Greaser, and Kinsey Mix for the six-player recruiting class for three-year head coach Mallory Laren Yag. And last night at Arco Field, West Valley Wolfpack. They were looking to keep their winning streak alive. The North Pole Patriots had other thoughts. It was a pitching duel between the teams. North Pole's Tyler Hill was great, tossing a one-hitter in a complete game. West Valley's Casey Lewandowski, he wasn't bad either with nine Ks. He picked off two runners as well. The Patriots did get five hits, but the West Valley defense had their pitchers back, getting timely outs. The one-hit Hill allowed turned into a run in the bottom of the third inning, Connor Sodden scored after a bump by Lewandowski in the North Pole era. Trent Chu would score in the sixth inning after a Parker Lumberger's hit went to a fielder's choice. West Valley shuts out the Patriots with a 2-0 win and improved to 3-0 in the MAC and 4-0 overall. There was some softball action at the South Davis Fields last night as well. West Valley and Monroe had the late game. It was one of two games for Monroe that evening. This was their second game. The Rams rallied a bit with three runs in the bottom of the second. Savannah Matt, Jamie Hammond, and Alexa Ellis scored runs. West Valley will add to their lead, though, in the second inning with a Zon Thompson RBI single, bring in Autumn with a 7-3 lead. The Wolfpack would reel off a series of runs and win this non-conference game 13-3 over the Rams. And that game was part of a doubleheader for Monroe. The Rams lost 17-3 to the North Pole Patriots. Carissa Ramos went 2-3 for three with a triple and 3 RBI for the Patriots. Robin Heineken had 8 Ks for North Pole. The Patriots, they're now 4-0 in the Mid-Alaska Conference. Good start for them. And also in boys soccer, last night, West Valley gets a 2-0 win over visiting Thunder Mountain. West Valley's Jung Meng and Keegan O'Brien scored, scored, scored twice in the Second half, in the first 25 minutes of that second half, O'Brien had a goal and an assist to lead the Wolfpack. Chris Wheat picks up the shutout for the Wolfpack, who are 4-3-2 and two on the year. A beautiful weekend of weather for a nice weekend of sports activities. So, something for everybody this weekend, too. Matches start at 9.20 in the morning for Day 2 of the Alaska Yukon Challenge Table Tennis Tournament at the UAF Patty Center. And for the runners at 11 a.m., the 6th Annual Alaska Walk Run for Autism 5K at Pioneer Park. At 11 o'clock, Day 2 of the last all-schools track and field meet of the regular season at West Valley High School. And at noon at the South Davis Fields, Allison and Hutchinson will meet for a softball game at 12.30 at Newby Field in North Pole. The Patriots host the Colony Knights in baseball and in boys soccer. Latham hosts Thunder Mountain on the pitch at 530. And then in the nightcap, game two, the NHL Alpine Lodge Robertson Cup Championship Series at 730 at the Big Dipper against the Austin Bruins. They'll play Sunday for game three at five o'clock if necessary. Now we end Friday sportscast with the play of the week. This week's play of the week comes from the Ice Dogs. Interior sports fans picked Colton Walters' assist to Brett Gervais, who scored with four seconds left in the second period of Game 2 in the Robson Cup semi semifinals against the Michigan Warriors last weekend. That was Walters' second assist of the postseason and Gervais' second goal of the playoffs. Fairbanks won 3-0 to sweep the Warriors and punch their ticket into this weekend's championship series. To pick the next play of the week, watch for a new I-5 interior top five plays on Mondays during the weekend recap. And that's it for Sports at 6. We'll come back for the Robbie Cup Championship Game 1 highlights and more. Mike Schultz is next with your full weather forecast, and we'll catch you next time. And welcome back into the weather segment. No, it's not Mike Schultz. It's me, Daryl. Going to go ahead and do the honors today, and Mike's got a well-deserved day off. Let's take a look at our almanac for the day. Our normal high is 58, and what do you know? We reached 58 degrees for our high today, so that's pretty good. Our normal low is 35. Last night we got down to 32, freezing, but uh, still not too bad as far as that's concerned. Our record high set in this date in 1995, 80 degrees. I love that kind of weather. Minus one in 1964, not so bueno. Sunrise was at 4. 
446, sunset 1053, 18 hours and 7 minutes. That is a total gain of 7 minutes over yesterday. Let's go ahead and take a look at what we got for temperatures around the state. As you can see, Barrow getting up there, 27 degrees on the west coast. Temperatures mostly in the 50s, upper 40s, except for Nome. They had some showers there, 35 degrees. In the interior, more of the same for us in Denali Park. Not bad. And in an Anchorage Bowl, they actually got up into the 60s today. Good for them. And on the Panhandle, Juno seeing some record temperatures right there. 71 degrees for a high for them. That's kind of rare, especially this time of year. Catch again, sunny and 66. Nice. Night just nice all over. Speaking of nice, let's go down to lower 48 and take a look. See, as you can see, People picking up the pieces after that uh, huge uh, thunderstorm system uh, swept all the way from, from Minnesota all the way down to Dallas. And yes, there were spots uh, in Minnesota where there were tornadoes, tornadic action there. Uh, as you can see from the Pacific Northwest, another brouhaha brewing up there. And that'll percolate until we get those boomers started. And so for the weekend, this is kind of the season for tornadoes in that kind of area. Another system down into the Gulf uh, of Mexico, New Orleans, seeing severe thunderstorms as well. And that's going to be the continuing pace for the rest of this weekend um, and for this time of season. Let's go ahead and take a look for Mother's Day. What's going to happen? Well, it's going to be downright chilly in parts of the Pacific Northwest. Showers across the Midwest states and then some spotty storms, uh, some of them severe at times, uh, affecting the southeast. And uh, just what can you say about Texas? Hot, hot and unbearable at this time of year. Windy conditions continue in, uh, in Southern California and that doesn't uh, do well with their fire season down there. So watch out for that too. Let's go back into Alaska and take a look at our forecast for tomorrow. Up north, fog and flurries for Barrow. Rain likely for Nome, partly cloudy for Fort Yukon. Temperatures in the upper 30s. Fort Yukon, 57 degrees. And for us in here in the interior, let's take a look, see. Yes, nothing but beautiful sunshine for the entire region. It's uh, welcome to say that. Uh, temperature is getting up there in the 60s. And as we move further south, we'll take a look at Juneau and Ketchikan. Mid 60s for them as well. Sunny for Juneau, partly cloudy at Ketchikan. Let's go ahead and take a look and see what we can see over in the southwest. Isolated showers for Cold Bay, uh, sunny in Kodiak. And uh, temperatures nice for Bethel, 60 degrees there. Uh, turning out to be a nice Mother's Day weekend for them, as well as commencement weekend. South Central, sunny for Anchorage, mostly sunny for Valdez and Homer. Temperatures in the low to mid 60s there. Not terrible, not shabby. We'll take it. All right, so let's go ahead and tell you about our allergy report. This time of season, you know, things are starting to sprout. If you look around at people's lawns, the grass is starting to come out a little bit more, but it's certainly not affecting the allergy report today. Really, the only thing we're concerned about are the tree pollen, the poplars, the, all the spruce out there. Yeah, it's, it's causing a nightmare for some people. And they're posting those pictures on Facebook. I saw that just a while ago. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at our forecast for the remainder of the night. 34 degrees it'll get down to. Scattered high clouds remaining cool in those the dark hours as well. But tomorrow, 63 warm. Perfect for all those outdoor activities. And remember, it is trash cleanup day tomorrow as well. So get out there if you uh, have some time and really try to beautify Fairbanks. And as we take a look at our extended forecast, by Sunday, 68 degrees, but it's going to be really hard to go to work next week because we're going to have temperatures in the lower 70s. And look at those overnight lows getting back up to 40 degrees. That is nice. And of course, as a gardener, that's, you know, you really want to tempt fate and get your stuff out there early. But still wait. And the, the advice is always wait until June 1st. That's perfect weather for tomorrow's cleanup day and trash bash we're having. Oh yeah, the oh, trash, trash bash. bash. So after you clean up, you can come out to Pioneer Park from yeah. one to four, and we'll have free food. Mm. Oh, free we're there. Well, I'm saying, I'm saying, very good. All right, before we go, KTVF and Bailey's Furniture are teaming up for a Spring Dream giveaway where you can win a furniture package from Bailey's valued at twenty five hundred. Stephanie, tune in to the Fairbanks Evening News and News Center final on KTVF Channel Eleven right here from April twenty eighth to May twenty second for the first half of a mystery word. Take it away, Joe. All right, mm -hmm. then visit Bailey's Furniture for the second half. Complete your entry for your chance to win. We'll announce the lucky winner during the Fairbanks Evening News on Friday, May twenty third. Watch for the mystery word enter to win with KTBF and Bailey's Furniture. The mystery word today is click. Click, click with a K. Again. This is a recurring mm -hmm. theme. It is. It is. They got to go and find the other half of that word. Mm -hmm. Don't forget it's with a K, too. Mm -hmm. We're throwing you for a little loop. <laughs> All right. <laughs> That'll wrap up this edition of the Fairbanks Evening News. We are glad you could join us. NBC Nightly News with Brian Williams is coming up next. And you can join us here six days a week at 6 and 11 or online anytime at WebSternEleven.com. All right, from all of us, the three amigos here, from all of us here at the News Center, we hope you have a great night. And a good weekend. And we hope to see you at the Trash Bash. Mother's yes. Day. Yes. Mm -hmm. Graduation. Everything. <laughs> good night.